very first third is actually a major third, and then it goes into a minor third, minor third, minor third. So there's a lot of minor thirds in that tune, which is kind of interesting. Hey y'all, Eric here. I hope you've been well. I've started a Twitter page and it's changed my life. I already have 17 followers and you can follow me over at Music Jung. I'm also on Instagram at eric.jung.music. Please follow me on those platforms so you can stay up to date with my latest videos. They'll change your life too. No, really. And obviously, please hit the subscribe button below if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot. So that's one of my favorite songs that uses a lot of thirds. To me, thirds are very, very important interval to understand because they are the building blocks for major minor triads and for extended voicings like sevenths, ninths, etc. In this lesson, I'm going to cover three things. What is a third? How do you make one from any root note? And what's the difference between the two types of thirds? the major and the minor third. In my recent video series on the major minor scale, I talk about intervals, and I define them as the distance between two notes. The smallest interval on the piano is a half step. And if you add two half steps together, you get a whole step. So a minor third is made up of one and a half steps, or a whole step plus a half step. And a major third is made up of two whole steps, or four half steps. So that means you can create a third from any note on the keyboard by using this method of finding the root note and then going up one and a half steps to get to the minor third and then adding two whole steps to get to the major third. We'll start with the example C. We'll go ahead and travel up one half step another half step, and one more half step. So that's a total of three half steps, or one and a half steps, to get to E flat. And now we have a minor third from C. So the next example will be E minor. So we'll start on the root note E, and see if you can guess what a minor third would be from E. You can pause the video if you'd like. So that's right, the answer is G. E and G make up a minor third. Next example will be a minor third starting from B. Go up one and a half steps to D, and now you have a minor third from B. Next example, G flat. Start from G flat and go up a minor third. That's right, the answer is A. Nice job. All right, and for our last example, we're going to use D sharp. So mentally go up one and a half steps to get to the minor third. That's right. The answer is F sharp. Let's switch gears and find some major thirds. Again, starting with C, go up four half steps or two whole steps to land on E for our major third. Next note, let's do G. So what do you think would be a major third up from G? You can pause the video if you'd like. 
That's right. It's B. Next up, we got A. What do you think a major third up from A would be? That's right, C sharp. Nice job. We got two more. G sharp. A major third up from G sharp. Hmm. Well, let's try going up four half steps. Looks like the answer is C. And for our last example, we're going to do C sharp. So what do you think would be a major third up from C sharp? That's right, it's F. So now that you're familiar with finding how to create major and minor thirds, I want to challenge you to memorize all the major and minor thirds on the keyboard. There are 24 total, 12 major thirds and 12 minor thirds. One method you can go about memorizing them is to start with all the white key notes. Start working on memorizing those first, and then once you've memorized those, you can go forward with the black keys. Once you've memorized all the major thirds, you can start on the minor thirds. Here's a pro tip. Once you memorize all of your major thirds first, it's really easy to find your minor thirds or vice versa. So say you memorized all of your major thirds, for the white keys and the black keys. One shortcut you could use is to just flat the third. That'll give you an instant minor third. So for example, here's C, flat the third, now you have a minor third. F, major third, flat the third, now you have a minor third, B flat, flat the third, get yourself a minor third. So if you just do that with all the major thirds, once you have them memorized, it's really easy to understand how to get your minor thirds. You can do it. The next step will be using these thirds to create major and minor triads, which is actually the next video I'm working on in this series. If it's not up in the end screen, be sure to watch out for that soon. Thanks again for watching, y'all. Hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next video. Play on, players. Pat it with this crap.